Well, welcome to our uh, our second live rewatch. Uh, we're gonna do something a little different this time, Mark. We we did this week in baseball. Uh, we did two episodes last time, and we've been humming the theme song to this week in baseball since then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you probably if you joined us a little bit earlier. You saw it on the on the starting soon screen. So I'm sure everybody will be, uh, you know, humming that for the next. Two weeks or so. It's just a great song. Uh, it's in your warm. Yeah. So this is what we're going to do. We have got a video today. I am so excited because I bought this VHS tape back in 1992. I was uh, in high school in Salt Lake City. I had no idea. I loved baseball. Watched baseball. Lived baseball. No idea what actual Major League Baseball players said to each other on the field. Now, yeah. You were a little bit, you were much luckier because you lived in a major league town, but you, you know, being a bat boy for the, for the Rainiers and working for the Mariners, you probably were more privy to what goes on at the, those mound meetings if they're really, you know, candlesticks and need a live chicken and that kind of stuff. But I didn't know, but. Uh, yeah, you never know, man. Sometimes it's just to uh, talk about where they're going to go to dinner. You yeah. know, just to relax the pitcher a little bit. Yeah, well, we did that one story. I forget who. There's some catcher went out to, I think it was Max Scherzer, and proposed a fantasy football trade on the mound. <laughs> just, That's and, just and, great. And it, and it actually snapped Scherzer out of it because, you know, he's kind of intense. Yes. And he kind of... Like what? And then he got right back into it, and he was fine after that. So yeah, that's impressive, man. That's knowing your pitcher. Yeah, that's because I mean, Max Scherzer could he could bite your head off if you do something you don't like, <laughs> or he doesn't like. Um, so we're gonna watch this video. I've also put in a couple of retro baseball things here as kind of commercials that uh, I one is especially for for you, Mark. But uh, there's some. You know, just some stuff from the 90s, uh, 80s and 90s baseball commercials that uh, I found that what am I going to do with them other than put them in here? But <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we get started, uh, this is, Mark, I don't know about you. I, I know Baseball Reference and social media, they put out this uh, this front page of theirs every day on social media here with the, with the, what is it, 12 players here. And I always go through and see how many of them I know. Just just by sight here, right? I got I got one today, and it's the newest <laughs> one. This is this is a tough one. Uh, if you can can you find anybody here? I know that this guy here is Clay Buckholtz, right there. Okay, I recognize him, and I can see his name when I hover over it. I don't know who any of these other guys are. Do you? My screen is kind of small. Oh yeah. You're, you're... But I, I can't tell. Oh, there's I'm just going to say one of them's Enos Cabell just because. <laughs> well, there's Rick Burleson. He was a pitching coach for a while, too, after he played. But uh, Doc McJames, Jack Taylor. Oh, Zach Wheat. There we go. There's a name we there know. He was also, uh, when we had Ralph Terry on, uh, one of the guys right. down at the end of the, the dugout with Ty Cobb and, and Cy Young and Zach right. Wheat that he went and talked to. Oh, no. There's Sam Chapman. All right. So, if you follow us on social media, uh, Sam Chapman, born on December 25th, just like Ricky right. Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam Chapman has a couple hundred stolen bases. Uh, Sam Chapman is a, uh, a racist piece of you-know-what. Mm -hmm. I, I guess we could, we could swear here, because this is not our podcast. This is, this is Twitch. Um, this guy, if you watched the movie 42... Uh, Sam yeah. Chapman went on to be the manager of, um, who was it? It was the A's, Philadelphia A's. And he was the one that was just giving Jackie all the crap and didn't want to play against him. Uh, he's the, you know, kind of the, the biggest asshole of the bunch, that's right. <laughs> should we say. Um, that's, that's weird that he came up because I had just tweeted about him on Ricky's birthday, so... All right. Well, uh, that's enough. I just like to do that. I like to come and, and look at baseball reference and see what we got. So, Mark, let's uh, let's get ready to watch a video here. Now, again, just like the this week in baseball stuff, this is kind of old. This is a VHS copy that was dubbed, you know, digitally. So not the greatest quality. 
<laughs> but uh, we're more interested in hearing the stuff, uh, especially on this one, because now it can be heard. Clever title. Uh, so let's just get into it, Mark. We can pause. We can rewind. We can do whatever we want here uh, as we watch this. It's about forty minutes long, and uh, let's just uh, let's just watch it and, and have some fun. Cool. <laughs> Dramatic pause. See now, this is this freaks me out because I sort bought of like this. Having an artist sit down and take and his I'm like, this is not the video I purchased. Ozzy from the outfield grass. Oh, is he sweet or what? Ozzy Smith. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Steinbeck used to show the runner the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Good Winfield. Wow. Those were those were my favorite White Sox uniforms. Oh, Mike Schmidt. Did he really need to run up the wall? I <laughs> never. No, but he knew he could. Hey, here we go. I make some of the plays that I do. Great guy. I got to uh, wash his. Uniform. <laughs> He's the nicest watch guy guys. in the world. Oh, there's your boy, Gaetti. <laughs> Hugging that line. Sitting on that line. <laughs> Kevin Mitchell misplaying a ball and getting praised for it. All right, that's just a commercial for You can buy this other video. I, it scared me when I bought this video, and I was like, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a chicken? No. One, two, three. Goodness. Is that evil, <laughs> evil or somebody? Why do they not do these kind of promotions anymore? <laughs> I wonder. I'm alive. Oh, there's got to be an easier way to make a living. Now, here. Oh, yeah, to announce this video. Now it can. I have no idea who that is. That's not Evil Can Evil, although he's dressed like him. Hey fans, have you ever wondered what it would be like to have a front row seat at the ballpark and be so close to the action that you can hear what a play, what a play. the wit of the manager? That's a big league play. I don't think Frank Robinson was known play. for his wit. You know why? He made in the big leagues. <laughs> and the wisdom of the third base coach. Yes, the crack of the bat. He's speaking baseball. <laughs> well, folks, sit tight and hold on to your hats, because we're going to take you where no ear has gone before. Yeah. That was Scott Sanderson with the A's, I think. Is that Mitch Williams? Oh, there's Rodney McRae. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> what did the... Wait, what was going on there? Was that... Did he think that was going to be a pitch out? Oh. What? <laughs> Somebody got it mixed up. I want to see this again. Rodney McRae. Oh, God. Why is the catch... Was he mad at the umpire there, or did he think there was a pitch out? <laughs> Can't imagine that, Can't imagine that being intentional, but I guess you never know. Hi, folks. Let's start off with some of my favorite people, the umpires. There isn't anyone I respect more. Don't you agree? <laughs> sure. No! No? But managers and umpires are a mutual admiration society. We enjoy a free exchange of ideas. 
and I know my fellow managers and I. That's the farthest Tommy's ever run, right there. Heart to heart talk. <laughs> Lasorda was one of the more <laughs> recognizable voices. Is that Pedro Guerrero and Dusty Baker? Yeah. Is that Dallas Green? Yeah. The ball did not hit the bat. There's no way it could have hit the bat. I swear to God, I hit the And everybody's favorite announcer, Tim McCarthy. Wait, I hit the bat, Dutch. Now, by the way, he said Dutch there, not... <laughs> that was Dutch Renner. Do you remember that name? Yep, umpire? I do. That he's jumping out of the way of the ball, and the ball was nowhere near the bat. Ball hit the bat, then hit him. Oh, wait. Who And the between the ball and the bat, there's about that much space. How the hell can it hit the bat? I swear to God, it hit the bat. So what? Where's he allowed to go? What are you gonna do? Put him in jail? No. Huh? Get him out of here. Put him in jail. I'm not gonna put him in jail. I think Joe is just trying to get run there. Oh, we were getting run. There's a shot. Yeah. The white rat. You gotta use your judgment on it. I understand. Yeah, he can get around him. How far? You shut Ah, you shut up. You to get me out of here. Oh, Earl, you run yourself, Earl. That clip is like five minutes long. Earl kept coming back and back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Yeah? You know, we don't always argue with umpires. Sometimes our conversations can be downright civil. That's sometimes. Yeah. Hey, Stay! Yes, you did. The pitch is right at the Dang. knees on the outside corner. Now, what else do you want? I can't take that away from him. Made a good pitch. There's another good pitch. Yeah, the, uh, the rules are the same. Yeah. Buford, I know you don't know the rules, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Tickets still available to that uh, night game at the Canada at the Stick. That's right. That's our that's our buddy right there. It's our buddy Ron Luciano. I got yeah. one of his books right you know, here. I found. I am right about the DH. But there are times when it comes in handy to have an umpire around. Who else knows what to do when the earth moves at a World Series? In a situation where we have a tremor, whatever happens, happens. Everything's in play. You know what happens to the first batter in this game? In other words, What's that? Just like, oh, just like a bad hop. You, got it? Like a ground you know who that batter hop. was? The lights, the lights go out. We got that cover. You know who the batter was? Don't. It's Ricky? This, yeah, it's the 89 World Series. It's game three. Oh, sure. Speaking of being covered, it's good to have an umpire around when you're about to embarrass yourself in front of 80 million people watching the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the embarrassment. World Series flies down. Umpires. You can't live with them. Did he really say the hitters don't them. like to see it? So that's why. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hey, lighten up, John Miller. Okay, enough about umpires. Let's talk about announcers. They're the professional talkers. Although sometimes to listen, you wouldn't know it. Ow! <laughs> My leg, you jerk. Bill Rizzuto along with Tom Seaver and Bobby Mersum. And Mersum? we are back together for the first... <laughs> <laughs> Phil, we're live. What? Oh, we are live. We're on 7.30. That's right. All right. No, all right. I, I know what you're laughing at. Somebody gave you a toy. You're dying to do this on the air. Right? Oh, yeah. And you're dying to go ahead. 
Okay. But anyway, no, here we go. Yeah, everybody throws out first pitches here. Pass for him. Wow. His form. I don't know about this. Well, see, he's an old pitcher. He's just a shell of his former self. Oh, that was a better pitch than 50 cents. Oh, that's terrible. Just a bit inside, as Bob Euchre would say. What do they say in Latin? Squid pro squid or something? I, I don't know what they say about that stuff. But it should be equal for both teams. <laughs> Long run for Bernanski at right. Then he makes the running catch. Oh. And then went hard into the wall. You have oh. your pocket picked? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and his hat. Obviously a lifelong New Yorker. <laughs> Here's Frank Viola sitting next to the security guard that is fast asleep, but not now. Yeah. Tony, we caught you. <laughs> there you are, Hawk. Ken Harrelson's the only player in Indians history that has his face retired. Boy, that picture is not problematic <laughs> at all today. To a grunt <laughs> yeah, we have an awful lot to settle, but it's bigger than both of us now, Tony. It's, it's gone pay per view. Here's the brain trust for me. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, Quebec. Is that Rick, Rick Cerrone on the right? Yes, that's Rick Cerrone. Of course, Mattingly. Yes. All night long in the jumper. He's shooting free throws. He's jumping rope, Tony. He's taking his vitamins. He's saying his prayers, brother. Tony, what are you going to do when the 14-inch pythons are wrapped around you? Oh, a Hulk Hogan reference. <laughs> yeah, they were doing Macho Man's voice. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is one of the commercials I put in. Whoever clicked on your baseball card, you are a classic. The trick, my friend, is to think young. Coke. New Coke. You mean you don't drink Coca-Cola Classic? Us kids like Coke. It's light, smooth. It's the latest. Kids, you still wear long johns. Yeah, but they're the latest in long johns. I love how they, they couldn't... They didn't want to shell out the money for the uh, to show the Yankees logo, so Maddie yeah. has got a towel. Yeah. Do you remember Classic. how controversial I'm New Coke was? Oh yeah, I remember. Didn't people were like buying the old Coke? Yep. Just they at, finally came at, out with the classic. Like if there would have been eBay at this point, it would have been all <laughs> over eBay for like thousands of dollars. <laughs> yep. I classic I, Coke came out and everything was much better. Yeah, I remember tasting it. I didn't, I mean, I was still pretty young at that point. I don't think I was a big Coke connoisseur, but I don't even remember what it was. It just Pepsi, essentially. <laughs> it, it it tasted like the same to me, but I'm not a, I can't tell a whole lot about sodas. You know, it's all sugar water anyway. Yeah, it's not the same as like when there was actual cocaine in it. That like no, If they wanted Coke no. Classic, they should have put the Coke back in Coke. Right, original recipe. <laughs> America's real choice. Oh wait, uh, we've got uh, Brian Krause is with us. Hey, Brian. Uh, he says, "Is that Tom Brookins, not Rick Cerrone?" Oh, I don't. Let's like... let's see it. I don't. I don't. I don't remember here. Let's see if Tom Brookins was uh, was around then. Tom Brookins played for the Yankees one year. In 1989, I know Tom Brookins wore glasses. I don't know. That might be, that might be correct. Yeah, but I, I don't even remember Tom Brookins on the Yankees. But there he is in '89. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good call, though. Maybe Tom Brookins. All right, enough Coca-Cola Classic. I've been in a few battles in the Bronx myself. Like this one from the 78 World Series. Here I am minding my own business. It's game four, and the Dodgers and Yankees are going at it for the second straight year. Mark, when you were a bat boy, what did the back of your jersey say, and what number were you? Did it, did it have any, were you a random number? Were you 90, number 99, zero, no number? If I remember correctly, it just said bat boy, and that was pretty much it. So Not the most exciting. Kind of, kind of like this. 78 World Series. Here I am Steve minding Garvey my own business. Here comes it's game Bat Boy. That's you right that, there. Very similar. <laughs> yeah, I did one time just as a joke. I took some tape and I changed the B uh, to an R to spell Rat Boy for one of the kids. And uh, another one was he was more of a grown up than a kid. I changed the B to an F, so it said Fat Boy. Uh, <laughs> 
you can't help but prank people in the world of baseball. It's just the way it is. For, when you were when you were doing it, did you ever? You never worked in the visiting dugout. Was it always the home dugout? It was both. I, I did both. Did you have to? Did you ever wear the visiting team's uniform, or was that not a thing at that no, point? It was just a Tacoma uniform. <laughs> Do you have pictures of it? I want to see pictures. I've never seen pictures of you. Man, I don't know. I don't know if I have those. I'll have to ask um, the matron. <laughs> Four, and the Dodgers and Yankees are going at it for the second straight year. And you bet I'm pacing. Thurman Munson's on second, Reggie Jackson's on first, and the Yankees uh, are threatening big time. Lou Pinnell up Classic against news. Tommy John, and with one out, here's the most talked about play of Lou. the series. Lou looks the same. He does. It's a perfect double play ball, except that Reggie sticks his hip in the way. Yep. The ball gets away, the run scores, and I'm screaming for an interference call. He's got it Look away. at those wheels. He's got to get out of the way. <laughs> right here. He's got it away in the middle. He's got to get out of the way. Right now, Tommy, right? Uh, look, you got different, uh, you got the American League umpire in the purple, and then you got the National League wow. in the blue. Remember that? And the, the turtleneck. Let's bring back the turtleneck from. You call oh. Reggie out a second. Gosh, that wasn't on purpose. <laughs> it damaged his Reggie bar in his back pocket. <laughs> yeah, you can see him too if if you see an alternate view on that. You oh, can see him ever so slightly move oh, into yeah. that. Absolutely. It was a brilliant move. It was, you know, unfortunate that he didn't get called out for it. But then again, he is Reggie. So were there was there one out at this point? Because that could have easily been a triple play. I mean, if you um, if you would have tagged if he would have tagged the runner who was right there and then uh, then stepped on second and thrown to first successfully it would have been that's terrible Tommy's not even saying anything (laughs) <laughs> oh man! Can't believe we got away with that. Today in instant replay, this would have gone on for twenty minutes, especially yes. in the World Series. Oh, yeah. That's a damn crime, Marty. That's enough to drive a man to diet. We went on to lose that game and the series. You know, after a grueling World Series, for me, there's no better place to unwind than spring training. But if you think I'm loose, check out these guys. We're back. Just uh, pull on your toes and then push and see how much stuff you can pull in here. I feel good. I feel strong. I feel ready to play. One of my favorites. I don't use the word stretch in my vocabulary. Begin! One, two, three. One, two, three. There's our Oh oh I didn't remember. Have some trouble. Hey! 
Excuse me? When you worry, you make him dumb. I was too impressed seeing Danny Tartable. There's my... Who's that? What that must be an indoor batting cage. I don't know what's going on up above. What is above them? That's weird. Christmas. Be happy. Say, bro, what you? What you Swan. I love you, man, and I mean that. Give yourselves a good hand. Nice day. Good job, boys. You know, spring training is the time to sharpen your skills, especially the practical kind. <laughs> Hot foot. Now, this practical joke comes every spring. It's called the three-man lift. It works when a rookie is convinced he and two others can be lifted up all at once by a fourth player. When he can't move, now he gets the treatment. All three-man lifts are not created equal. The Reds have their version, like getting a guy not once, but twice. 150. Is that Let Glenn me tell Braggs? you something. Yeah, the Reds have that. one easy mark in this guy, Glenn Sutko. I've been around some naive guys, but this guy takes the cake. Sutko was tricked. Look at that. He's wearing a mesh like trucker hat. I remember when that Beautiful. was in, in spring training they used to wear sure. that. Once yeah. before. And now he thinks he's in on the joke to get rookie Ross Powell. Two, two, 180. 180 right 180. here. Exactly. Now watch. While Sutko's finding his two partners. Wait, was Glenn Sutko, didn't we talk about him like a couple of shows ago? Like, didn't he, or no, it was, uh, was it the last one of these we did? Did he hit a home run? Uh, no. I honestly don't remember. No, Glenn Sutko has 11 career games played in the big leagues and no home runs. Never mind. <laughs> Guess it wasn't it him. Was not him. The Reds make it all the more believable by collecting a phony There's pot of sheriff. money. Hey, I know it. Who's that? Who's that? And Larkin. Yeah. And Dick. Yeah. Wow, look at it. I've seen him go. <laughs> 618 no pounds. No Eric way. Davis doesn't yeah. look like he knows what's going now, on. Now, Glenn Braggs is the he man who's supposed to lift the three players off the ground. Too bad he's not in good shape. After yeah. look this is the guy, I remember, that snapped the bat over his back in the World Series in 90 against Dave Stewart. That's right. On, the, on his follow through. Looking at that specimen, I think they selected the right man. These rookies on the sidelines are as unsuspecting as Pal and Sutko are. Now they're ready. Randy Myers is on the left, Pal in the middle, and the biggest sucker of all, Sutko, is on the right, playing his part perfectly. Sands about pants gone on. A little twist on it. <laughs> You got that right, Glenn. You are a two-time sucker. They got you again, buddy. Now, I actually got to witness a, a three-man lift live and in person in uh, the clubhouse once. And it was, it was amazing. I knew what was going on because I had heard they were going to do something to this poor rookie. I don't remember his name. He's just up from Double A. And uh, I think it was Louis Polonia that was walking around going was I he gonna be I, the one that lift him <laughs> i think yes he was yeah and uh pokey reese uh no not pokey reese po uh scott po i can't remember his name third baseman guy Spezio? Uh, no Pacific? i can't think of it anyway he's out they had him they they had him they set him up and they just poured the stuff all over the poor sap you know and and guys bring different things some guys had watered down tobacco and oh. some had some kind of food, ice water, et cetera, et cetera. And it was, it was pretty funny to watch. And it, they got this guy real good. And he's nothing he could do. He was brand new. You know, he's, even if he knew what was going on, he was going to have to fall for it. Well, plus it, you, it's the guy in the middle is usually who they're getting. And they vote the guys on the sides have him locked in. So he can't go anywhere. Yeah. I remember, look, I remember this. Um, they were they were trying to collect money for the pot to make it look more realistic. Yeah. And I remember Mike Heath uh, reaching into his pocket and pulling out two hundred dollar bills and going, "Boom, I'm in." 
And I'm like, yeah, walking around with $200 bills in your pocket just for the heck of it. That's impressive. Okay. So Mike Heath was, let's figure this out. Mike Heath. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's, uh, see if we can figure out. So what year was this? Oh man, really going to ask me that? 90... Well, well, here, we can kind of figure it out because we'll look at his minor league stats. Tacoma. <laughs> it must have been 92. Could have been. That was the only time he ever played in Tacoma. So let's okay. let's look at this roster. Scott Brocious, the governor. Jorge Brito. Lance Blankenship, one of my favorites. Yeah. Eric Fox, another one. Any of these names... Uh, jumping out at you is I can't really see it man to be honest uh let's see we got uh Mike Heath Scott Hemond Dave oh Henderson. I remember Craig Paquette Craig Paquette there he is oh my boy Troy Neal the owner of his T own private island TNT I love him, oh, but what a I got a Troy Neal story that I'll tell you but <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's not dirty or anything it's just that probably you know could get well well, he's yeah. already in jail, isn't he? Or he he was arrested at one point. Was he? Yeah, because yeah, remember... He was a big dude. And, he and he went and played in Japan, I think, too. But he was the guy that owed so much, um, like, child support money. And he went and bought a private island and lived there so that he couldn't be... Like, they couldn't get him. And then one time he got on a plane to go somewhere and they were waiting for him and arrested him. But look at that. He played in Japan for six, uh, six seasons and then Korea. Wow. Yeah. I liked him as a player. Oh, he could hit a ton. Yeah. He, he really could. Only three years in the big leagues, but look at those <laughs> nineteen fifteen. That's not bad for the 90s. That's, I mean, that's, Right at the beginning of steroids, which I'm sure he was probably a fan of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of those, uh, a lot of the guys were. All right. Well, uh, unfortunately, I was a sucker for it, not only once, but twice. <laughs> once when I was called up in the year, and uh, now here in spring training, when we got a couple of, a few extra guys that weren't on the roster or even rookies themselves. And uh, I was along in the trick this time. I was one of the uh, one of the guys that was in, in part of the scheme here, and unfortunately, they, uh, they double-teamed me and got me again. <laughs> so I got a mouthful again. Can you imagine having a prank pulled on you in front of a stadium full of people? It was Fan Appreciation Day in Toronto, and while rookie Derek Bell was sitting in the dugout, this is the one thing I remember most about. A couple of veteran this teammates too. were getting ready to shock the daylights out of him. Joe Carter giving away Derek Bell's jeep. That is absolutely hilarious. Look at that look on his face. What? <laughs> well, what's it? Kelly Gruber wearing a World Series champion hat in the dugout during a game. What's up with that? That's is section 123, row seat one. Congratulations. <laughs> Crowd getting a large laugh. Now, this is this totally makes sense because that's a Ford Explorer, right? And this is right yep. when they came out and they were what everybody wanted. But look at these guys. The, yeah, they were the car right then or he the vehicle that was popular. Definitely pimped his ride there with the <laughs> why it's green yeah. is kind of weird. But At the expense of Derek Bell here this afternoon, out came this vehicle. Now here's Derek Bell. He recognizes the vehicle. That's mine. <laughs> I'm going to just pause on his expression every time. Carter and Winfield are inside. <laughs> and on Fat Appreciation Day, they drew a seat. Derek, his mouth open to disbelief. <laughs> it, it doesn't get old. And they gave his vehicle away. He <laughs> <laughs> figured it out. Look on his face. All's well that ends well, at least for Bell, who got his car back. 
but not so for Daryl Johnson and the Red Sox in the 75 World Series. None of us will ever forget Game 6, but Ed Armbrister's bunt in the 10th inning of Game 3 was the most controversial play of the series. The ball went into center field, the runners went to second and third, and now it's my friend Daryl Johnson's turn to cry interference. Look at look at how slim Pudge is there. Oh my, yeah, he ain't Pudge at that point. In shape, Carlton Fitz. And you went to call it. Oh, sir, you tell me what you were calling, man, but he sir, did it. Sir, on a play like that, I'm sir. telling you, the man interfered with that man on him play. I'm telling you, I want to see a man down here. Come here. You mean to tell me that you can't help him on a play like that where he hasn't even touched the ball? And the man was interfering with him. There's no interference when a ball was hit and the catcher goes for the ball and a batter tries to get out of the way. And the batter tries to get out of the way. He was all over the catcher. When the batter comes out of the box after hitting the ball and the catcher makes a play, there is no interference. I'm going to tell you something. What do you think? Oh, he explained it real well. Um, The... If, if it's a bunt or if it's a hit right in front of the plate, the batter has a right to the base path. It's not interference. This would be another one that would be reviewed for 20 minutes. The play went, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know what you're going to make a ruling on that, but I want you to explain exactly what you were looking at when you called the play. Okay, the guy, the ball was hit. He was moving for the ball, and the runner was moving to first. The runner was all over the catcher. Right, so there. I can't help that. It happened right there. A lousy operation. But it wasn't lousy for the Reds. The bunt set up the winning run that came three batters later, and Cincinnati went on to win the series in seven games. We? Oh. Now let's talk about me. You know, ball players look up to their manager for leadership. After all, we're like father, teacher, and preacher all rolled into one. They look up to me. <laughs> Rick Monday having some fun with him. What? What matters most is having a consistent <laughs> philosophy. And if you ask me, my philosophy, like anything that's worth saying, is worth repeating. In order for us to win, we got to take 25 players. 25 players. A coaching staff. A coaching staff. A training corps and an organization. I tell them if we all get on one end of a rope and pull together, we can pull the rest of the clubs with us. But if half get on one end of the rope, but the other half get on the other end, you can pull all day long. (laughs) And all you're doing is pulling against yourself. And if it works off the field, why not on? Right. We'll get you out of here. Hello, Tom. Hi, John. How are you? How are you doing, what would you do in this situation if you were managing this ball club, good. John? You, did, you took this club in first, man. I, don't I, don't know, know, I got a big decision to make, and I just don't know what to do. I thought maybe possibly could help me. Give you a time. John, yeah. I got a decision to make, and I just don't know. Maybe possibly, time, whatever you think of me best, John, I'll go along with it because I know you're very nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy's still getting warm in the pan. I haven't decided yet. Okay. I mean, this is the World Series. You've got to give me a little time. i got to make a decision here. But what do you think I should do? Take him out or leave him in? All right, I'm going to take him in. Okay. <laughs> the writer come up to me and he, said, he asked me questions. Tommy, if you could pick anybody, if you could start a major league club and pick anybody you want anywhere in the big leagues, who would be the first player you would take? And I, without any hesitation, I said, Eric Davis. Who would you take? He knew something I didn't even hesitate. I said, Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I admit it. It's not easy being me. Was that Gary Carter? Was it? That's pretty funny stuff. Tape. I said Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> no, that's not. Gary Carter was on the Dodgers a lot later. Wasn't he? Yeah, he just has the curly hair. Yeah, I see curly hair and I immediately think of Gary Carter. He was on the Dodgers in, oh no, Dodgers 1991. That must be Gary oh. Carter. Huh. Did you watch, uh, have you watched that 30 for 30 uh, thing about the 86 uh, Mets on ESPN? Yes. I just yes. watched it this last week. That was really good. It's fantastic. I agree. Especially I the insight that most of the team respected Gary Carter but didn't like him. Right. <laughs> poor, poor Gary. Okay, I admit it. It's not easy being me. <laughs> Here's Starting another question. Oh. A strong 
strong arm, great fielding, grit, speed, and a little magic to be a winner and make it to 1989 starting lineup. Winners like Conseco, Viola, Gibson, Greenwell, Davis, Dawson, and more. <laughs> they all look exactly alike. Each sold separately, and every figure has a new uniform, new pose, and new collector's card. Keep your collection growing with the winners of... Wait, was that new Gooden collector's card more, just a different and color? Alright, so there he is in the home uniform. Collector's card. <laughs> so yes. it's the same card. <laughs> yeah, same picture. <laughs> but enough about me already. Let's bother the players for a while. One winner. Some guy was going around telling all the girls in the nightclubs and stuff he was Ron Say. And they had a big article about it. And uh, he sort of said he knew it was an impersonator because they said that he was going to the nightclubs and he was the life of the party and picking up everybody's check. Notice how they have the All Star logo blocked off so that nobody can step on. They got armed guards standing over here so you don't step on it. If you cross over the thing, watch what happens. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, it, the old veteran's here. He's been playing with what, 1921? There's our boy. <laughs> oh, look, there's Dave Parker in the background. <laughs> and Griffey. Yeah, nice. Hey, there's my friends right there. Say, what are those? Oh, look at that. That's such an awful look with the high tops. I, that's just wrong. Test one, two, test one. Will Clark's rocking the <laughs> real stirrup, so. The Tony Gwynn bar. That's what kind of player I am. I'm an ordinary guy. I don't try to be flashy. I don't try to look real good. I'm just a basic guy. Go out and do my job. Where these guys are the same kind of person, but look at the rappers. Look at this. Look at all the detail on that. Hey, Grim. Grim. Now, can you explain to me how come your rapper looks so good and Go. mine, mine looks so so ordinary because i'm the best look see they want to look look at the face on it look at his face look at yours okay that's why <laughs> okay good enough for me <laughs> no question about it i love the all by the way uh we got a question in chat here that they, they were talking about ron say picking up everybody's chicks and being the life of the party which is why tommy knew that it wasn't ron say the penguin right <laughs> Star game and no matter how many times i go to one of them i have to admit I still get a little starstruck. I mean, here you are boy surrounded some by the best and the most exciting players in the game. And you know, the players love the whole thing more it's than anyone. It's a meeting of the Olsons, the Greg Olsons. The Olsen twins. <laughs> <laughs> look, at Sk look at skinny McGuire and skinny Bonds. I mean, McGuire's not really skinny, but he's certainly skinnier. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a precursor. He's like, how'd you guys get that big? I want to do that. <laughs> what the players really love is Come the in. home run hitting contest. And in 1990, handling fastballs was nothing compared to dealing <laughs> that with Roy Bill Rage. Murray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Roy Rage. That was Roy Jealousy is what that was. That's right. And now for the National League. This batter wears his socks very high. A guy who wears no sunblock. Let's hear it for Matt Williams. Come on, one time, number nine. Oh, Matt Williams. Matt Williams is back. He's coaching this year. Well, when baseball starts, he's not managing in Korea anymore. I saw that. Oh, okay. I, I want to say maybe with the Padres. I think, I think maybe Bo Mel. That would, yeah, that would make sense because he was the A's third base coach for a couple of years under Bob Melvin before he went to uh, to Korea. I think that's where he's coming back next year. Oh, cool. Now from the hated New York Mets, <laughs> he hit 21 home runs last week. <laughs> he's bad. He's bad. He's beautiful. He's clean. He's straight. He's sober. He's Daryl Wild Strawberry. 
I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> I'm yeah. just so happy. I'm not positive on that either. Home run contest, the wind was blowing in at Wrigley Field. This gave the hitters a chance to get back at their MC. No way he's catching it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Bill. In this event, the idea is to hit the ball, not catch it. And let me tell you, folks. That would be the one thing I think that could make... Uh, make the home run derby interesting again would be to have bill murray do all the commentary oh man i mean everyone would tune in yeah at the 1992 contest wait okay let's see who we got we got mac who's that in line is that a met and you got joe carter i'm assuming that's brady anderson was this his one big you year got the sideburns it's yeah. real small for me to see. Sorry. Yeah, it's well, it's a VHS tape too. And then you got you got McGriff, and I don't think that's Puckett. It's that's definitely that second guy is not Puckett. He's too skinny. <laughs> um, Bonds at the far right, and then an Expo that might be Larry Walker. Sure. I don't know. Is that is that second Padre? Uh, is that second Padre Sheffield? Maybe. Sheffield came up with, what, Milwaukee? Yeah, but remember he was on the Padres for a while. What year is this? No one hit. Don't worry, Bill. Let's see what year it is. We'll event, the idea is to hit the ball, not catch it. Now I got to And let me out. tell you, folks, at the 1992. 1992. All right. Give me one minute here. All right. Let's see. 19... 19- 92. Well, we could watch the whole thing. <laughs> well, maybe someday. <laughs> let's see if they've got results here. Uh, let's see. 1992. Well, Maguire won it, but it doesn't tell me who was in it. Um, let's see here. Oh, okay, here we, we'll find it out here. And good old baseball almanac. If. Uh, if uh, Baseball Reference doesn't have it, Baseball Almanac might. So 1992 Home Run Derby. So there's Mac, Griffey, Carter, Ripken, Sheffield, Walker, McGriff, and Bonds. We did it. Wow. Or, or did we? Who, who's that? Who's the... Uh... Oh, we won't say anything bad about Larry Walker. We're big Larry Walker fans here. No, that's not... Uh. That's Griffey. That second guy is Griffey. That just doesn't look like a Mariner's top, does it? Yeah, I can sort of see the 24. Yeah. It doesn't look like a Mariner. Oh, you know what? You can see the yellow S. Oh, uh, on his hat. Bit. Yeah. That would have given it away. Yeah, see, I thought it was 34. Like, somebody said it was Puckett, maybe. And that was my thought, too. But he's too skinny. But that's Griffey. That would have... That would be fun to watch. Except for you probably have to watch... You probably have to hear... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Berman. Berman? Berman? Going back, back, back? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No one hit the ball out of Jack Murphy Stadium more often than this guy. Here's a man who has made everybody else look like they're hitting singles. Larry Walker, the bat boy, no way. With 28 home runs of the Oakland Athletics. There's Puck. Mm-hmm. I don't know who that grip is. Oh, there we go. Unfamiliar. Yes. Yes. Two. He's going to he, he hit seven. You hit 10? All right, 10. Yes. I literally do not remember any home run derbies except for the ones on the right, or on the right, that I've been to. Yeah, I think that's Rick Aguilera. I think I said Jeff Reardon. That's Aguilera. I, I don't remember any home run derbies except for the one I've been to in person. I remember last year's, but that's that's it. They're just not that memorable anymore. No, I, I agree. I, I couldn't tell you who won the last who won any home run derby well, except Alonzo's this one because you just two. said it yeah alonzo's won the last two but that's just because that's right. alonzo i remember i remember in atlanta when it was in atlanta like i think it was 2000 or 2001 
when I was working there in the All-Star game. And the Home Run Derby, it was, you know, right during, right after Mac and, and Sosa it had the, might have had 99. I don't, well, here I can, can find out pretty quick here. Um, and... No, it must have been 2000. 99 was Fenway. Yeah, so it was 2000. And uh, I was expecting ESPN. Because whenever ESPN came to do a game, you know, I was sitting, I was sitting at Camelot right by home plate at Turner Field. Whenever ESPN would even just do a weekday game, they would just take over and they'd make a mess of everything. So we were expecting to maybe not even be able to stand in the camera well for the Home Run Derby. But it ended up being just me and and my buddy that worked at the Atlanta at the at the Braves Hall of Fame, and we if you watch it, it's just the two of us standing in that camera well, which was so cool because it was McGuire and Bonds and uh, Sosa. I mean, it was a wow. it was a big year, and that was a lot of fun. That's cool. Back when when I cared about the home run derby. <laughs> just put my face out there, but he hit it. Yes. <laughs> That laugh. Yes! Stay fair! Stay fair! Fair! Yes! 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 Is that Roberto Kelly? Was he an all-star for the Yankees? Yeah, I think that's him. If you're if you're this is the first time uh first time watching this is what we do <laughs> a lot of pausing and a lot of looking up was that really oh wow roberto kelly was a two-time all-star back-to-back in 92 and 93 i would have never guessed he was a two-time all-star played for 14 years in the big leagues and he played in 162 games in 1990 wow wow that i would have I never it. guessed he was a solid player you yeah know? 290 lifetime average, 106 OPS plus. Yep. You can't hate on that. War, positive all but two years, 20.5. Yeah. Wow. Not bad. I think he's a he was a base coach for a while somewhere. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember where, but yeah. All right. I got too many windows open. <laughs> Let it go, Mac. Yeah, home run, home run derby is definitely it's just too long. I think they think too many people are into it. They really make it last way too long. Yes, another one. Let's go make it. Yes, look at the look at the boy. Look, see you, Jedi. Wait, okay. Brian says that there's a somebody is twice in a week he dove for a ball which hit him in the face and became an inside the park home run. Who is that? Larry Walker. I don't. I don't remember. Oh, Roberto Kelly. Ah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, he didn't win a Gold Glove. I mean. Yes. I was gonna say that's a pop up. Yes, we need big for that. The break and hitting foul balls on the right side over here. Like me hitting. Cal wearing a t shirt. This is right here. I got a call. See ya. You guys, I knew it was going to be a low pitch. What was the final score in this one? Wow. What an exhibition of hitting. 11 home runs, and he still has two outs to go. All right. He won with 12 total this year, so I guess we're seeing every one of them. Griffey came in second with seven, then a bunch of four. Griff had three, and Bonds came in last with two. Make me look good. Don't let me down. Oh! There's Chuck Knobloch. Dude, have you seen... Did I... I know I've told you Chuck Knobloch's on Cameo, if anybody wants to pay for it. Dude's gotten pretty big. He is really? a large individual. He's because he's kind of short anyway, but he's right. ooh, needs some nutrition. Not that I don't. Is Matt? Is that Matt? No, that's not Matt. Oops. Oh, 
All right, chat. Who is that? Who is that on with in the tiger uniform? Now I'm curious. Mark. Hey, hold is. on. I I recognize that guy in the eighth row threw it in. <laughs> That's my friend Tony. <laughs> what are the odds? Let's see. Matt Noakes. Nope. Eighty seven. Uh -huh. He was an all star. With only one year, he was an all star. Uh. <laughs> Let's see, what is this? This is uh, the 90, what did I say this was? This is the 90, 92. 92 All-Stars. Travis Fryman. Look at this. We don't even that need the internet. We've got the, we got chat all over this. It's a third baseman, I believe. Yeah. Let's see. Did he start? I don't think he ever started. Uh, for, Fryman? Now they've got... Edgar, Robin, uh, Ventura, Travis Fryman, shortstop. There he is, shortstop. Okay. All right, points for chat. How about that? 12 homers. That McGuire can hit. You know, a writer just asked me yesterday, Tommy, if you had to start a ball club, what player would you take? <laughs> I, without any hesitation, Mark McGuire. That's a callback <laughs> right there. Real now fun. let's sneak into the American League locker room and listen in. My God, Tom, could you pull those pants up any higher? <laughs> <laughs> As the players go over the signs before the game, manager Tom Kelly lets Buck Showalter do the honors. Uh, Mets manager Buck Showalter, my favorite. H&H &H hit and run. Hat. That's a hat. H&H hit, &H hit and run. Belt, bunt, two hands, B&B. &B. Shirt, two hands, steal. Last thing I touch. Okay? So, uh, Mac, if you're on first base and I go bang, 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 steal. And I won't do much. All right. I'm going to tell a story here because we've, we haven't told this one on the podcast because it, it's, it involves me and Buck Showalter. But I think we can share it here. I don't, I, I think I've told you this one, Mark. So, Buck Showalter, manager of the Orioles, right? Adam Jones in center fielder, former Mariner Adam Jones, just to get Mark's goat there. Um, he's out there, and uh, Peter Angelos uh, contacts the uh, the production crew, who I work with. Uh, the Orioles are one of the teams that I work with, and they want a they want a spray chart for the game to go on the big screen for each batter. So, okay, you know, we do the scoring software. We do the software that puts the stuff out on the boards. So I spend like a week and a half getting this thing made so that it works the way that it should. And uh, Adam Jones is asking Buck every day when this is going to happen. And they keep asking the production crew and they keep calling me and I'll, I keep telling them I'm working on it and give them updates. And so we finally have it, the very first game, because for some reason Adam Jones doesn't like to look in the dugout and get positioned or whatever. He wants to just turn around and see where the guy hit it last, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. But I get it up there. First game is beautiful. It works exactly as it's supposed to. I get a call the next day from uh, from the Orioles, and Peter Angelos has said, we will never use that again. Because <laughs> when the visiting team is batting, and the spray chart goes up, there's too much of the visiting team's color being shown in Oriole Park. So all my work down the drain. One so, game. One game. I did the next year do it a little bit differently. Um, I d <laughs> this is what I've been told by the, by the head production guy in, in Baltimore, is they were leaving after a game, and they... You know, we're looking for a new spray chart. And uh, Buck Showalter, as he's getting on the plane, asked for my phone number because he wanted to know why this wasn't up and working at that point. But they fortunately did not give it to him. So I don't oh, know if it's funny. true or not, but that's what I was told. But too much, too much visiting team color. Can't have that. I've, uh, I used to, when I was official scorer in Tacoma, I used to get the occasional call from the manager. The best was I was, I used to work at a toy store. And uh, they called the toy store in the morning, and it was the manager talking about a play from the night before. And I'm like, he goes, remember in the seventh <laughs> inning when that ball got hit to left? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, hilarious. Crazy time. Uh, KB, uh, this is KB uh, Toys. Yeah, this is uh, Bob Boone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you shortchanged my third baseman. Should have been That's a right. hit. That bang, banging. Okay. 
most of the time you guys will be hitting anyway. So only thing I worry about is hit and run, bunt, and steal. Hat, hit and run, belt, bunt. Ten shirt, bucks says these steal. are the Mets signs okay. next year. Two hands. Two hands. If I go one hand, as soon as you see me moving one hand, you know nothing's on. Get in there and whack away. Take, right here. You won't have many take signs, but Tommy, get the situation where he wants you guys to take. I'll give you one thing you take. Okay? All right. We'll start off, uh, Robbie Alomar start off the game hitting first. Probably hit a single or a double and steal third. And Wade will get him in. Then Puckett will bunt for a hit. And <laughs> <laughs> Carter will drive him around for the right. third. McGuire can hit something somewhere, sacrifice fly or whatever. Then uh, Mr. Ripken Jr. can pick up some of those pieces in case Mr. Glavin's still in the game. Griffey will probably have a hard time with him. But then we got Sandy on the backside to pick him up, okay? Uh, Kevin Brown has 14 wins for the Texas Airborne Rangers. Uh, he's going to be our starter, okay? And we go from there. Boys, let's have some fun today, and everybody be ready to play the first inning. We don't want to lose the game in the first inning. Let's win the game in the first inning. We can do that. Oh, fuck it, didn't bite. We're going to take the lead right here. Take the lead. First inning. This was all off Glavin, I believe. Well, it's the first inning. I told you he can't get out of the first inning. Hey, that's exactly it. I, I I remember being in Vegas for one of the All Star games. This might be it. Um, and he gave up like seven consecutive hits or something. Yeah, I mean, I've I've said it before when we work when I worked in Atlanta that if Glavin was starting, it's like oh that first inning just took forever. Yep. But then after that, he was you know he was balls to the wall and absolutely. Obviously, the Hall of Famer. The inning, There's our boy Travis Fryman. Win this game in the first inning. Ruben. Ruben might kill this guy. He might hit one nine miles. Yep. Dutch behind the plate. Right, right on top. He kills that stuff. He, he, he kills that stuff. I call it. <laughs> why, why was Norm Charlton batting to end the game? <laughs> American League scored four runs in the first inning and cleaned up with a 13-6 win. That game was definitely over. Okay, now this is a little special something for you. There's no audio here. Now, I was trying so hard to find this when we had Bobby Valentine on because I... I was, you know, we asked him about this, and I knew I had seen the video of this, but I couldn't find it. So, Mark, this is just for you. This is 2007, obviously. This is in uh, in Japan, and Nolan Ryan throwing out the ceremonial first pitch for the Chiba Lote Marines, <laughs> and, and brushing back Bobby Valentine. Yo, that's great. So if you've if you've heard our interview with Bobby Valentine, he talks about this. Nolan was warming up; he didn't know it was going to be this big a deal, and then bang! <laughs> <laughs> I've even slowed it down for you here. That's awesome, classic Nolan Ryan, right and there. What what did he say? It was still like eighty miles per hour because they put it up there. Because uh, oh, he he can't throw any slower than that. He's Nolan Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that. I was so mad because when we went to Japan for that Mariners A's series, Ricky was the ceremonial batter in the first game. And I think um, like Kenji Jojima threw it or something. And I wasn't familiar with this tradition. And I was like, Ricky swings and misses on purpose. And I'm like, what the hell? That's not cool. But <laughs> <laughs> So a little insight too. So, you know, we work in production, uh, Mark it, with the with the Mariners, we have been known for some first pitches to put up fake speeds. We do not put up, especially now because Statcast it does not register uh, first pitch speeds, but we can manually put in speeds. Uh, Russell Wilson when he threw out the first pitch at the Mariners <laughs> was manually altered, but it's now become legend that he threw some like ninety mile per hour pitch. That's awesome. <laughs> Look at Nolan just laughing at oh, him. Oh, yeah. You know, and he's <laughs> loving it, too, because he uh, Bobby played with him and managed him. Yeah. This play in the 73 World Series showed it's never over till it's over. At least not for Yogi Berra's Mets. It's game two. But Harrelson's on third in the 10th inning. And this fly ball looks as though it will give the Mets the go-ahead run. 
But home plate umpire Augie Donatelli well, sees it otherwise. <laughs> Augie's on his... And Yogi and the Mets just Why is Augie wild. on the ground? There's Willie Mays. Glasses on Yogi. Yeah, with transition lenses. Look at how dirty. Why did he get on the ground? This is. <laughs> look at this. Take another look, folks, and judge. I mean, he's getting in good position. Oh, there's Raleigh Fingers too. Hey. And there's, I think that's Fosse. As if this is. 73 or 74? I think he was only there in 74. Oh, then that's... yourself. But if you ask me, what the heck is Donatelli doing sprawled out on the ground? I don't think... I think he's safe. <laughs> now, do you get that's the so feeling weird. Willie really? said more than, hey? By the way, the A's won the series in seven games. That was in the early 70s. Let's see where Vida, Raleigh, Reggie, and Catfish are now. We stand on God. Not bad. I knew the words <laughs> to both of Here's them. Here's your boy. The mad Hungarian. <laughs> Always mad. Wakes up looking like that. <laughs> relax, okay? Just relax. Everybody's the same. Stop Reggie sweating. Being relax. A dick. Go, go ahead. E easy, easy, TD. Easy. There you go. <laughs> Oh, uh, wait, what is this? Reggie, look at Reggie's feet. Tell me what's going to upset me here. <laughs> is there, uh, does he have no stirrups? No or stirrups. He's got, yeah. he, those don't even look like sanitary socks. They look like just gym socks. That's I, I know my name. It's written on the back, so I don't forget it. Are you getting all Look at that. There is old the old Coliseum. This is the Coliseum I grew up with. It was really nice. Well, nice. It was pretty, though. I mean, you got grass up there. You can see the Oakland Hills behind it. It used to look really nice. Hey, He's got hey, a Jeff. ball. Yeah. Quick story uh, on Reggie Jackson since he came up. I was uh, He was coming to speak to Tacoma, to the players that day, about charitable work. He was a special envoy for the A's. And I knew he was coming, so I got there early. And I'm all the players are in the clubhouse with the door shut. And boom, the door flies open that entered that comes into the clubhouse, and there's Reggie. And he just walks straight towards me, puts his hand out, and goes, How you doing? I'm Reggie Jackson. And I went, <laughs> You're like, No shit. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? <laughs> go through there, buddy. And uh, uh, I actually snuck in and got to listen to him talk and everything. It was, it was pretty fun, but him introducing himself was hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know. You know, it's, it's different than my buddy George. Uh, and his wife, Kathy, went to a game and uh, she they were close to the field. And she says to her husband, is that Reggie Jackson? Reggie turns around and says, <laughs> asking if I'm Reggie Jackson is like asking if you're a woman. <laughs> True story. He's such a dick sometimes. <laughs> I mean, obviously, Ricky went, you know, the story of Ricky when he was stuck into A's games. And uh, tried to get Reggie's autograph, and Reggie blew him off. And Ricky never forgot, although Reggie was was uh, one of his favorite players. Wow! Do you think you can throw it to him? Let Raleigh practice his speech. Okay, Raleigh. Raleigh, what's your Hall of Fame speech? Go ahead. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Oh, it's our fun. audio seems to be loud. Nah, I gotta say more than that. <laughs> you remember Rudy when he first came up? When nobody played catch with him? <laughs> yeah, he owes me. Credit for a lot of those saves. Eight and two thirds. I could have gotten that last left hander out. I'm done. I was done before I started. Oh, is this from Seattle? But we're not. Hey, what is this guy doing? No, Maybe I'll answer. just let the guys <laughs> behind the mic handle this stuff. I get down to get the funky. And the one, and the two. That's Matt. Look out. Yeah. The players for him. high pop left side foul. Is that Doran? Oh, oh it's they see, yeah. Oh. He runs the Good. The security guard's very lucky that was not steroid Caminiti because he would have been dead. <laughs> security guard to a curveball hit deep to center field. Devereaux. 
<laughs> Mike oh. Devereaux. Oh. Sacks. Oh. <laughs> Nails Derwood Merrill, who makes the call. Now there's a gamer with the smile. Foul to the screen and the sp- now the audio is a little bit off here on this, but I rem- I was watching this game. I remember this game when the sprinklers came on here. Sprinklers come on here. <laughs> I remember watching that. I was playing my I was playing Stratomatic, or not Stratomatic, Status Pro, which is another status uh, Stratomatic like game. And I was just had this game on in the background. And I was looking down. And I remember. I remember this. <laughs> What's the matter with Johnson? He's got a toothache. He's got a toothache or something. Wait a minute, he lost a tooth! <laughs> he lost a tooth! This. That's his normal face, a... though. <laughs> Look at that! Hey, hey, who knew that trainers had to have some dentistry back yeah. Randy Johnson. He throws so hard that his teeth out. He had to throw everything that's... Not much zip to it. And a shot past Kelly down the line. Roberto <laughs> Kelly after this one at holding. Oh, man. Guy fell on the stairs almost on Roberto. Downing is on his way to second Ooh. with a double. Let's see. He's up and <laughs> this guy. I think he's around. So apparently, he's, he's okay. accidentally do that. He goes. And Did he, he think he's going to reach down? And <laughs> there he is off, and here's the throw, and Bonds has him safe. the score right now. Not much too slim to hear. by Charlie Williams. See that? Yeah. Looks, like a, looks like a wad of gum or something. There goes Gibson. Bouncing ball, hit and run. It bounces off his helmet. Gibson Pirates legend, third, Kurt Gibson. And they have him in a rundown. Walker running Gibson back to second. Salazar lays on the tag. Yes, they say he got him. Can you believe that play? Glenn, uh, here's some gum on your shoulder. Oh, thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, put it in his mouth. He put it in his mouth. What the, is with that laugh? Maybe that's where he hides it when he's not chewing it. Set it on his I hope that was his gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little more. I'll take another bite. It's good Mill stuff. Thompson! <laughs> oh. Breaks the bat, and Magadan tries to get out of the way, and they're going to win the ball game. The bat almost hit Magadan, he ducked it. Not- was it, didn't uh, Valentine say, was it Magadan that was his batting coach in, uh, in Boston? I I'm, I'm trying to recall. I, is, I honestly don't remember. Is that Chip Hale? Chip, what the hail? Chip Hale. Was he, was he with the A's at one point? I mean, I know he was as a coach, but uh, Chip Hale. He might have been, yeah. Uh, no, Minnesota his whole career. So, yeah. Oh, okay. That's so he not didn't Chip play Hale. <laughs> never, never mind. Get the ball. I don't guilty. believe what Start I just guilty. saw. Let me tell you. Wait, is that Bernard innocent until proven guilty? Yes. Neither did Sparky Anderson after this play in the 84 series. It's the eighth inning of game five at Tiger Stadium. Oh, and a red hot Kurt this. Gibson comes up with two on at first base open. Trader Padres Jack. Padres manager Dick Williams calls nope. for an intentional walk. But he's about to experience a manager's nightmare. Oh, he's coming out. Uh, you mean you're talking about striking him out? Yeah. He don't want to walk you. He don't want to walk you. <laughs> <laughs> motivation. Yeah. Boy, how clutch, though, is Kurt Gibson in the World oh, Series? Yeah. Wow. That is a shot, too. Wow. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I knew that. Blowing kisses. Hall of Famer Jack Morris. Whoops. My buddy Sparky definitely got the last laugh. Gibson's homer made it 8-4. And one inning later, 
the Tigers wrapped up the series. As for us, Chet Lemon. our laughs are just about up. But thanks for coming down on the field and hearing baseball from the inside. Before we go, we'll Salas? leave you with this gem from the king of confrontation, Earl Weaver. Now it can be heard. Yeah, I think it was out, Kaylin. I was trying to figure out who they kept, that the coach they kept showing. What's that, Earl? Jeff. Ah, oh, you're full of... You, you put damn years and years. And don't you ever put your finger on me again. You hit me, Earl. You put your finger on me. That's okay. This will go on for <laughs> five you minutes. You ain't gonna knock nobody on her. You do it again and I'll knock you right in your nose. I didn't touch you. You pushed your finger. I did me. not. No, you're, you're lying. God. You're lying. No, you are. You are lying. This is in the first inning. You are a liar, Earl. You are Earl did not have a good day. It was a quick day, but not a good day. You're here for one reason to f***ing good. Wrong. That's the only reason you're wrong, Earl. And you'll have your chance tomorrow. Oh, you got it as quick as you can. What is wrong with you? You ain't no good. No, you aren't either. Yeah, you well, aren't you either. You ain't no good. You're no good either. Hey, you're, you're, you'll never have our games tonight. I hope. Yeah. I, what do I care? I forget. I forget who that who this umpire is, but he ended up never not being allowed to work Orioles games shortly after this. And the quicker you get on, it'll be better too. Yeah, that's right. You ain't going nowhere. You aren't either. <laughs> he just keeps we coming back. Quit. <laughs> Oh, you're going to be in the you Hall of Fame. It. Why? You know it. Why? You World Series? You know it. You're going to be in the Hall of Fame? You know it. I've won more than I've lost, kid. He's, oh, no, he's yeah, using his know. middle finger to point that You better get going, huh? Fuck oh, I better get going. You better get going. Oh, that must be it, right? He's going he's gonna to go now. Back one more time. <laughs> <laughs> And another thing. That you had your hands on. Nah, that's wrong, Earl. Wrong. Earl Weaver, uh, known for arguing with umpires, but even more known for the tirades that he would throw when he did so. Yeah. I mean, he was angry. When he got angry, he got really angry. Remember, it was way back, one of our first podcasts, when I found a picture of somebody had bought a... In a thrift shop, they bought an Earl Weaver uh, jersey, and it, it ended up being like an actual game used jersey, and it had that special pocket sewn into it, so Earl could put his cigarettes <laughs> in in his jersey. <laughs> Authentic, very nice. Yeah. So you know, there it is. Uh, it can now be heard. It was not heard until then, but now it can be heard. That was. Uh, an actual VHS video I purchased at one point in my uh, in my youth. Yeah, that was fun. Good choice on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that that's all we're gonna do today. But um, that was fun. Uh, uh, oh, Bill Howler is what uh, is Brian is telling us is the umpire's name. Bill Howler. Nice. Uh, so. We're trying, uh, I think we're going to try and do these once a month, as we said last time. It's been about a month. We did this one. Uh, maybe we will let, uh, let's, you know, once we post this uh, in on YouTube and, and some other people have a chance to watch. First of all, thank you, everybody that joined us today. We had quite a few people pop in and out. Um, maybe if somebody has got a, a, a video uh, they want us to watch, or we'll go back and, you know, there's plenty of This Week in Baseball on the Internet we can find and do some of those but some of these videos are fun i've got some i've got some other ones too i've got some some things from japan that are actually kind of cool because a lot of major leaguers would go over there and be you know when they'd be on a tour and they would do these game shows like there's this video i have of barry bonds taking bp in the tokyo dome and the pitcher is jumping on a trampoline and like throwing it from the top of the when he's in the air and stuff there's some there's some what it's the internet. There's some weird stuff out there. Yeah, well, good point. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Baseball Bunch. Uh, that I've watched several of those recently. 
uh, we can do one of those. The one of the Gary Carter is just so fun because he is having such a good time. He is sprinting all over the field. Uh, maybe we'll do that. A Gary Carter uh, baseball bunch. That's a good idea. But uh, yeah, we'll try and do one of these once, uh, once a month or so. But uh, thank you, everybody. Mark, that was fun. It was, man. That was a good time. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. And, and if you're watching this on YouTube much later, thank you, too. <laughs> and don't forget, see, we're not, we're not YouTubers. We're podcasters. You're supposed to say subscribe and like and, and all that stuff. But uh, right. yeah, do that. Also, uh, follow us on social media, uh, Two Strike Noise, uh, at Two Strike Noise, Twitter, Instagram. You've obviously found us on Twitch or YouTube if you're watching this. And, uh, yeah, we put out a podcast every week. So until then, uh, until next time, uh, I think that's going to be it. So uh, thanks, everybody. Bye. Good night, y'all.